Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and cover a highly requested video, uh, which is basically covering one of my two Atlas strategies. Now I've got two uh, primary ones I've been running this league. I basically have the Harbinger and Chill, which is not very chill. And then I have the Deli and Chill, which is unfortunately also not very chill. Now the purpose of these two Atlases the Harby and Chill, um, which I won't cover in this video, is basically to force as much monster density in the map as possible, then rolling your dice at basically like how mobs, how many mobs you can kill, which typically triggers and, you know, drops a bunch of loot. So you can see like my Harbinger currency, you can see the exotic currency here. Today we're going to be focusing on the Delirium and Chill, which is this one. Now, unlike the other Atlas, this one right here can actually be run as Alk and Go. So what Alk and Go means in this context is if I were to just, for example, grab a map, right? Alk it up. Let's reduce the fact we don't want to run that. Uh, yeah, that works. We can actually just go run it like this. I will say that I like to add domination, um, and we are farming Exarch altars. Now, if you want to go a little bit higher investment, I recommend using some very cheap scarabs. So Shaper Scarab adds an extra influence. It's literally less than one chaos. I buy them three for one, so 0.3 of a chaos. Influencing Scarab is a little expensive. I've been buying them for about three chaos each, but it's worth it because it increases the pack size of the Exarch uh, mobs, which then creates more pack size, which then drops more loot. Uh, Hunted Traders I get for about one C each. Magic pack size I get for about two C each. I do believe these directly synergize with each other. And then you have the Domination Scarab that you don't have to run this one. Um, there's a lot of other random density ones you can add, but this I've been getting for about two chaos. And it works really well because when you have a shrine that has a 50% chance to be guarded by an additional pack, and that pack is one magic mob or magic pack, and then that magic pack, I believe, scales off of your 40% pack size. All of this together creates a very nice synergy. More importantly, it's very good for gold. Um, this atlas is very good for gold. It also comes with a guaranteed delirium. So right now we are at, what's our gold count? Nothing. So I say in this map, I probably get between 8 and 13k. Now granted, if I'm using my uh, scarabs, it'll definitely be more. Uh, let's see here. I'll just take one for regret here. So just to confirm, this map was literally just out. There is no chisel. Um, the only thing we did is on the map device, we did domination for like, was it three chaos or something? It's way more efficient than using a scarab, which is the reason why I do it. capture there sorry about that it seems like to me most mobs that are dropping gold are either a blue pack or a rare mob so i think strategies that can force rare, more rare monsters and more magic monsters are going to be very ideal for gold and there are definitely exceptions to this rule so for example the beyond mobs that i'm killing do not drop any gold as if beyond mobs drop gold i would be averaging like a hundred thousand, okay, not a hundred thousand, probably like 30 to 50,000 in just these, uh, these like Alk and Go maps because Beyond adds so much density. And as you're kind of stacking everything together, Beyond really capitalizes on that. Although, interestingly enough, I think I only got 25 gold from that pack, and that was a whole blue pack. So, still trying to figure out exactly how uh, gold works here. We are up to 4k. Like that delirium where I didn't get gold either. We're up to six point three. Hello again, local.
There we go. Finally got some altars. Got like super unlucky the whole time. Okay, I think the last spot we have is down right here. What was this? This map gave us a total of 10,000 gold. And here is what we looted from this map, with the exception of this row of scarabs. So nothing too crazy in this map. Um, you can clearly see we like did not get a lot. However, we didn't spend anything on the map, so everything that you get out of it is free, right? Now I'm going to show an example of, uh, of pretty much a toxic sewers here. So this one is chiseled, and we're going to go ahead and throw in our shaper, our influence, hunted trader, magic pack size, and additional shrine. You can see in this map, there's about 2,500 mobs if you total that. Now there is, I will say there's a lot of variance with the amount of mobs per map. I think it varies by like plus or minus 50% literally. So that's one thing to take into account. You by a few feet of death. Okay, so we're at like 10.6. So I would say a large amount of how this Atlas makes its currency is number one, altars. Sometimes you will have lucky runs where you'll get all just exactly like I just did here. You'll get altars right away because of the extra pack size on the influence. And when you hit your early ickers right away, you will end up finding so much. Now you don't have to run toxic sewers. You could quite literally run any map you want. Uh, I pretty personally just run maps that I really enjoy. I was running Crystal Ore for a long time, for example. So we are up to 14k so far. I think we were 10.6 when we started. Foundry is another really good one. I've been running Foundries as well. It's a huge map. So another way that this atlas makes its currency is the abundance of map drops. You'll notice that in my atlas here, I have every single map node allocated on the tree. This is for two reasons. Number three reasons. Number one, I can pretty much infinitely sustain between two maps. Sometimes infinitely sustain one, but 100% I can infinitely sustain two with my favorites. Number two, I get a shit ton of excess maps for all of my map runners. Number three, uh, T17 maps go for a crazy amount of currency. So literally, if you drop a T17 map, you have funded like, I don't know, like 10, 15 maps. Because I can sell mine in bulk for usually 70 chaos plus each. Uh, I've already sold quite, I've made so many divines this league just selling T17 maps to players who want to run them because everyone's in the, the FOMO of all I can farm is T17. I mean, I get it, but I like blasting my T16. I don't really mind. I don't feel the need to go to T17, it's a lot more annoying to roll the maps no matter what build you're playing. So sometimes I prefer fun more than anything else. Map is clear. Zero mobs remaining. So we had 10.6k. Now we're looking at 20.6k. So, you know, basically a solid 10,000. Uh, even though we like juiced, I genuinely think it's because A, Toxic Sewers is a smaller map. So I think there's less natural mobs in it. Uh, and number two, like I said before, there is just a big variance. Also, I just realized I deposited all of the, the embers and acres there. Uh, there's, a, there's a big variance in mobs that you get from these. 
Anyway, this is my atlas. I pretty much farm when I'm doing low investment uh, strategies. The Harbinger one is much more expensive as it's like 50 to 60 chaos per map. This is much more entry level, but I will say that it's very dangerous. Uh, prime reason it's dangerous is it takes every single map modifier effect node on the tree. So when you're running your maps, the map modifier effect at the top here goes crack. So for example, two uh, projectiles rounds up to three, right? Monsters have a 92% chance to avoid impale and bleed, 46% less accuracy, etc. So this is where you have to be a little careful. It is kind of like a more endgame oriented Atlas. But nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. I'll have the uh, Atlas linked in the comments below along with the scarabs I used. See you guys all tomorrow.